Hey folks, Bruce here from Forlo Life, and today I'm going to start putting together my press brake. Uh, a lot of people online seem to be asking about what's the best welder I should buy to start out with and what can I do with it. And I thought I'd start bringing some videos uh, showing the equipment that I use to build the stuff that I do. This little welder here I've used to do a lot of things. Uh, all of the bodywork on that Land Cruiser over there that I did was done with this machine. Uh, I've welded up a thumb for my backhoe, which is up to three quarter inch steel thick, three quarter inch thick steel. And right now you can see these I beams in the back here. Uh, these are probably about three sixteenths thick, um, maybe a little more. I'm going to be welding them together. I also welded up my log splitter, which had up to one inch thick steel. So this is a little 110 volt MIG welder with a gas bottle on the back. Does more than you need for 99% of what you're going to do. As long as you're welding steel and you're working on restoring a vehicle, this is going to do it for you. You can buy a Miller, you can buy a Lincoln. This is a no-name. I'll give you a little tour around the machine, but really, one of these little machines is more than what most people need. So, let's take a little bit of a closer look, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do for welding together this press brake. So this is a Real Gear MIG-140. Runs off a 110-volt plug plugged into your regular uh, outlet. And I'm running right now in it 023 wire, solid wire, and a bottle of uh, Argon CO2 mix on the back, which is pretty standard MIG welding gas. And for the most part, that gives me decent results. You've got to change your feet, your, uh, your travel speed a little bit, and your gap maybe, and maybe sometimes I'll do a weave instead of just a straight bead. But really, it's all about watching the puddle and seeing that the puddle is the right size when you're welding. So you just kind of adjust your your manually adjust as you're welding to make sure that that's working properly. Get yourself an auto darkening helmet, a cheap 110 volt MIG welder, and now let's go do some welding. So I suppose I should really explain that what I'm putting together here is basically uh, it's going to be almost like an H shaped frame and the two sides are the vertical so that's a vertical and that's a vertical this frame will stand up like this uh, the beam across the top which I was welding the lifting eye to is going to be the top of the press brake the beam on the bottom which would be this one here is going to be the support and then the beam in the middle is the one that's actually going to move up and down uh, kind of in the side tracks uh, to act as the press brake. The other piece is a flat bar here I need to weld together, bolt together and we'll weld to the bottom of the middle beam that moves and they will form what's going to be holding the die and then there will be a, sorry, the, the, the press, I, I've never run a press brake, the, the die being the push that pieces, piece that pushes down. There will also be a die on the bottom in the V shape uh, that's just going to be angled. So there's a lot of work left to do, but I thought I'd bring you the beginning of it. I uh, will do a couple more videos as I progress through the build. If you want to see that kind of thing with more welding and grinding and sparks and metal melting and stuff like that, stick around, click subscribe, more to come. And once I'm done building the press brake, I can start pressing some sheet metal into hopefully body panels and pieces of frame to repair the next Land Cruiser that's coming in here, as well as the two that are already in here. Thanks for watching. Stick around. Click subscribe, like, share, all that stuff. Bye-bye.